Good morning, everyone. Almost lunchtime, so I will, I will try to keep it uh, in time, and to finish in time. Uh, my, rep my presentation itself is, uh, in fact, a bit longer, so I will skip some of the fundamentals that are in the background of what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, well, I probably won't be talking much about these, but I will go to the essence, and in fact, the essence of what we are doing with our research project is just what uh, the talks that were just uh, that have just passed have tried to realize. The sheer uh, uh, label, for example, is one of the things we are looking at to use in the context of our consumer side use of artificial intelligence. Uh, so. What we are talking and what we are researching here in our project uh, has everything to do with how you can use AI as a non-developer, as a non-technical user uh, in an ethical uh, way. So this is what the talk is about. Uh, trying to uh, produce a practical ethics for creatives. So who am I? Perhaps begin with that. Uh, I have done uh, uh, lots of stuff in uh, my time. Uh, by education, I'm a philosopher. That's why I'm also uh, doing the ethical part uh, in the context of uh, uh, this research project. But I have also uh, a long history of uh, development, entrepreneur, inter internet entrepreneurship, and then uh, the last 20 years, in fact, as a lecturer and researcher. Uh, at Ho West in Kortrijk, Belgium. Um, done that in several departments also, uh, no time to stand still with that, uh, and done a lot of research concerning the effects of networks on social uh, societies, on social environments, ecosystems. Um, in fact, the, the research we are doing currently, uh, AI and design, uh, is looking into the uh, effects of the new thing that is quite important in, the, in this context of uh, networks, namely artificial intelligence and more uh, specifically generative artificial intelligence, how uh, we can invest that in creative processes that have been used uh, already a long time and where there's a definitive uh, methodology used by many of the players in the sector. Uh, so the research I'm talking about here is, is called AI in design, and it is how to fit AI tools uh, in the creative processes using ethically sound methods. Um, why is that important? Uh, uh, it's quite evident, I would say. Um, AI is something that creatives can't avoid anymore. If they're not using AI, they're uh, getting behind. Uh, uh, so they have to use AI. And if we want AI to be sustainable, to be ethically sound, there has to be a method where we can integrate the, uh, the methods the uh, creative people use, uh, integrate these in an ethical way so that they just have an extra tool uh, to, to use that they are used to. Um, so where are we in the research project? We did some literature review. We had done some uh, workshops with uh, students and, and some players in the industry uh, and are currently developing an AI-enabled framework uh, with uh, an, an integrated ethical compass. Um, the intention is in the coming year to uh, have uh, case-based uh, uh, framework testing. Uh, we will uh, try to implement the framework that we have uh, designed uh, into the industry and try it out in several uh, specific contexts. And when these tests prov uh, prove to be uh, sound and uh, usable by the industry itself, uh, we would like to uh, look whether or not there's possibility to expand the domain we are uh, focusing at and certainly also the geographical uh, domain. Uh, so what are these creative agencies? Uh, well, these are creative agencies in a broad sense. Uh, it's uh, 
multimedia installations, it can be uh, visual uh, uh, productions, it can be industrial product designers, it can be text producers, marketeers, communication designers, and so on. But mainly they are all small and medium enterprises with uh, specific needs and specific requirements uh, up to, uh, at, for sources usable by them. Um, so that is also thing that we can't avoid to uh, talk about. Uh, they have, do not have a lot of luxury uh, in the sense that they can uh, spend a lot of time uh, on things they uh, do not really know a lot about. Uh, so that's a very important aspect of what we are doing or trying to do with the development of the framework. Um, so now there's some background here, but uh, in first instance, it's important that you know what the tried uh, and true method is that creatives uh, often use in the context of uh, 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 assignments they get, and that's the, uh, the double diamond method. I don't know whether you are all familiar with the, that uh, method, but it's something that if you are a creative, you are probably using some variant of the double diamond. Uh, design thinking, for example, is very close to uh, the double dim diamond method. And what does that double diamond method do? Well, in fact, there are two large diamonds, eh? therefore a double diamond. The first diamond is determining what is really being asked of you. Eh? You get a challenge, and that challenge needs to be addressed uh, in a clear way. The first thing you need to do is do, do a lot of research, do a lot of determining of what is going on, uh, and then after you have done your research, you try to define exactly what the problem is. So you have the discover and the define phase in the first diamond. At the end of that process, you get to a decision phase where you yeah, should know what you need to produce, what your creative challenge is, and using that definition or that uh, determination, what you need to do, you are going to look for a solution. Um, that uh, is the second diamond. And there you really go on to develop uh, solutions that are possible for that problem that you have defined. And after that, uh, uh, again, that's... Uh, a phase where you uh, try a lot of things. Uh, brainstorming is a very important part of this uh, phase. Um, after the, the development phase, you have to select uh, a kind of solution uh, and determine what the solution is. You also see that uh, a lot of the uh, arrows in this uh, picture uh, go around on different uh, types of phases. and. What that is, that is iteration. And in fact, iteration is the core of the double diamond. Uh, you, have, you, no, you do not go from start to end in, in one time. You go to the end by uh, iterating during your process. As said, this is something that uh, creative agencies use a lot. Huh? Uh, and they are used to using this. There's a lot of tools that are uh, being enabled to fit in that double diamond method, and they know, uh, creative agents know what they need to use in what context. Now, the, uh, the start of, of the, the importance of uh, artificial intelligence in the context of uh, this uh, in, in creative processes makes that maybe uh, that's not so evident where you need to integrate those AI tools. They are, creative agencies are uh, on itself, not very used to uh, use uh, artificial intelligence, but they do have to use it because otherwise you are left behind. So there are a lot of yeah, uh, problems uh, or there are a lot of uh, ways to solve the problem of how you could use these uh, uh, artificial intelligence tools. Uh, and some of these methods try to change the double diamond. Uh, uh, one of these things is uh, the method of the Board of Innovation that tries to change the double diamond into the Stingray model. It's called the Stingray model. And that Stingray model uh, tries to, uh, in fact, 
transpose the whole AI story into one large block, a block that can change. Eh? But there's a one large block uh, that is in the uh, small diamond in the beginning, where uh, the uh, there is made there there is a production of a model that knows a lot about the problem. In fact, it is you could say the the big diamond that is shrinked into one small diamond that contains all information that you can use in an artificial uh, intelligence model to uh, integrate into your cr uh, creative processes. Um, and you get the light blue uh, part of the double diamond here that is, in fact, completely uh, guided by that model. Uh, that model produces a lot of potential uh, avenues to uh, to try out, to, to see whether they work or not. Uh, and the human intervention is, in fact, a bit uh, in the background. Uh, it, it has an influence, it is an important aspect of uh, the ultimate solution. Uh, that's the, the, the darker side of the Stingray Diamond. Uh, but it's been uh, a bit background, that you could say. So why does the Board of Innovation proposes this as a, a possible model to use artificial intelligence? Well, in first instance, they think that success and innovation is not about human thinking alone. Uh, we completely agree with that. Uh, there's artificial intelligence has a place in the creative process. Um, they also think that it focuses resources on desirability, the double diamond, the classic double diamond, and not on feasibility and viability. We do not agree with that. And in fact, you could say, if you develop something, if you try to uh, solve a challenge uh, and go to uh, an outcome, you, desirability remains the main uh, uh, thing you want. Uh, certainly because uh, desirability is also directly linked to the ethical aspect of the development. So we don't think that's a good reason to change the model. And the last uh, reason why they think the new model is necessary is that it reinforces uh, the, the old one, the double diamond itself, reinforces human biases and shortcomings. Well, I would say at least that the chance that that is happening due to AI is at least as great. Uh, so I don't think that's a good reason either. Uh. So what we are proposing is not change the classic model. Keep the double diamond, but ingest it with new aspects that make it work with artificial intelligence, and more specifically, in an ethical way. So this part I will skip, that's about the complexity and ethical uh, aspects that are uh, connected with uh, humans interconnecting, being uh, uh, itself very complex beings that interact, makes it not useful to have a large block uh, of a, a trained model to integrate with the artificial intelligence part, because that is not adaptable enough, it's not flexible enough. Uh, that's the reason why these slides are in here, but I will skip them because it would take too long. Um, and what we are proposing is, in fact, the uh, uh, creation of an AI-enabled, ethically inspired creativity orchestra. Uh, so, uh, you can see an orchestra that mostly has a conductor, but that's not really necessary. Uh, more about that in a moment. Um, but in any case, it's quite important that you see that the artificial intelligence part is ingested all over the place. Yeah? It's, it ta it's used whenever you need it. Uh, the zooming in uh, uh, circles uh, are all about that. And there are some uh, rather large uh, circles uh, at the transition phases, uh, where you really stand still with the ethical part. Uh, um, the zooming in are often very short, can be uh, very detailed. Uh, um, anyhow, it tries to use a methodology that is very, uh, uh, that the, every creative agency knows and ingest it with artificial intelligence that can be uh, ethically sound. 
So the first thing that is important in the methodology is team alignment. Uh, because we want that creative team to be a kind of orchestra. Uh, um, so what is important in an orchestra, that's that they know how to play their instruments. Uh, uh, of course, that's for a creative agency just the same. Yeah? Um, and if it's a small team, it might be very well so that everyone knows also the ethical aspects of AI, what is important in the context of uh, the ethical aspects of AI. But that is not always the case, of course. Uh, um, at least they should have uh, an elementary uh, formation of, uh, on, ethical, on ethics. Um, but that's not quite sure that that will be the case. Uh, uh, so one part of what we we'll, would like to do is uh, enhance the toolkits they use with some uh, ethical extra instruments that they can use in the context of uh, their normal creative process. Uh, but as I said, it is quite possible that not everyone will be up to date on these things. And in that case, and certainly when the team is rather large, it can be quite interesting that you have a kind of conductor. Just like in an orchestra, yeah, you have, of course, uh, some orchestras, uh, a quartet, uh, a rock band, or a jazz uh, uh, combo, don't, doesn't need a conductor, yeah, because they all know how to play, and they all know how to coordinate with each other. Yeah. But in the context of a large orchestra, uh, uh, where big teams are being used, it might be quite interesting that you have someone who knows when to use what, uh, who gives direction in the team of when to use s uh, that tool and when to use that kind of test, for example. So, organizing your team with the necessary aspects to handle AI on, in an ethical sound way is a very important part of uh, the uh, framework we propose. Second part has three parts again. Uh, use, think, try. Uh, um, and the first part, use, has everything to do with the labels we were talking about in the previous session, if you were here. Um, you uh, know, of course, as, as a creative developer, uh, that you are not the developer of the AI. Uh, you are the user of the AI. You are the consumer of the AI. Of course, the AI has a lot of uh, things before it's being used. Uh, you have the, the creator, the production team, the implementer, the instruction uh, side, the teachers, and the policy makers. Uh. All those uh, creation, production, implementation, and instruction uh, are before you get the, the tool. Uh. They have a, a kind of ethical legacy already in them. Some of the things are, for example, sustainability and openness. The two things we also would like to uh, make clear to the audience using uh, our audience, the creative uh, designers, uh, that they see what that legacy is, uh, the ethical legacy of the products they are using. Of course, they also can decide not to use the, the, the things that they see, but they at least should know what they get. Uh, so we would like to uh, avoid what is there called the downstream dream horror, that they have to search for all those ethical aspects of those tools that they are using. They can't do that. They don't have the resources for that. So what we would like to do is have some to, to make that easier. And that's the whole thing about labeling, the thing that was in the last session also there. Uh, the other thing is uh, think. Huh? So the, you have seen the 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 circles in the double diamond uh, diagram. These are, in fact, uh, moments to zoom in or zoom out of a problem, uh, or an aspect of the problem or the challenge. Um, and they can be looked at with lenses. What are these lenses? Well, we propose six lenses, but these are certainly not the only possible lenses. Yeah, uh, just as uh, in, a, in a normal camera, you can change the lens. Uh, uh, you can have another look at the problem with other things, with other ethical uh, 
schools, for example, uh, to see whether that problem that you are handling uh, uh, is made more clear by looking with that new lens. Now, more on that also in a minute. Um, and the last part uh, is a tryout. Uh, you don't know beforehand what the effects of your things uh, that you de are developing will be. So you have to, uh, and in fact that's a bit of a uh, already part of the double diamond uh, uh, methodology, you need to uh, try on a, on a smaller scale what you are planning to roll out in a on a larger scale. So um, to do that, you need a kind of uh, playful attitude. Huh? You need to play with the things to see what the effects are, try them out in your uh, testing pro uh, uh, public and see what you get from it. You, the playful attitude is also very important because yeah, you know that in artificial intelligence tools there will be ethical problems. By seeing those problems you can learn a lot about the ethical problems with humanity itself. Huh? Um, because in fact they, uh, it's, it's kind of a mirror of, of, of what we are doing as humans. Huh? So if you know that, you can see some of the defects or the vices of humanity itself and perhaps do something about it uh, while realizing what is coming out of that uh, specific AI tool you are using. So some more detail on the uh, use uh, part. Uh, first of all, uh, why are uh, we going to do that? I already mentioned that uh, more or less. Uh, creative agencies don't have the time and the resources, the knowledge even, to go into the, all the details of what AI instruments do. Uh, so we would like to channel those downstream horrors. Um, and you have already seen that label. Um, there are examples. Eh? The Nutri score is one, Eco score, Planet score, uh, the Shear score that we seen uh, just a moment ago are uh, all examples of scores that can be that are already used in other contexts. Why are these uh, labels so interesting? Because they're very simple. Uh, you just have to read, is it an A, is it an E? Uh, an E is bad and an A is good. Uh, and if you have a label that is a bit more detailed, like the planet score, uh, you have some more understanding why this is the case. Uh, uh, and in some cases, it's sufficient that you know it's good. Uh, uh, and in other cases, it will be, be interesting to see more detail. Uh. What, you will, what we would like to propose to our uh, uh, creative developers is uh, still to be looked at. It's not sure whether it's sufficient that they see that it is, for example, sustainable, uh, that it has a good uh, eco-score. Uh, maybe it is necessary to see more details. Uh. It will also probably depend on the kind of creative agency you are talking about. Um, so the first steps we are doing is trying to define what would be a very measurable and easy to use parts of uh, AI tools that uh, gives at least uh, some indication of uh, how far uh, these are ethical tools. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, the first one is the openness score. You could also call it the transparency score. And there we have, uh, in fact, simply translated an existing um, uh, transparency index into that uh, label. Um, and you see that it's the Foundation Model Transparency Index. It's published every six months. This is the second edition now. And it tries to uh, evaluate uh, the uh, AI models, uh, very well-known AI models, uh, on transparency. It's a whole questionnaire. It, uh, the uh, models that are participating do it volunt voluntarily. And you can see that they get a percentage on 100% is the max, is, the, is totally transparent, totally open. Um, if we go over the list, there are 14 uh, models in there, uh, you can see that uh, there's one model that has a D and there's one model that has an A. Uh, um, in that case, you could already see that some models, uh, if it gets a label, would get a, a green ticket 
and might be uh, more interesting to use than uh, another model that, for example, has a D. It's a bit, uh, it's not completely useful in that sense that it are very different models. Uh, uh, so you are comparing a bit apples and oranges. Uh, um, but uh, if uh, the things that are happening nowadays, uh, a lot of these uh, indexes uh, will see the light of day uh, in very soon now. So what we'll need to do is select the most prominent ones to uh, use them and maybe even combine, combine them to get to uh, one label that is used as uh, uh, broad as possible. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, the other one is the SUSTA score. We haven't done anything with that yet. It's just a, a design for a moment. Um, but for example, the shear score could be very well used in that SUSTA score. Um, so uh, in that case, it would translate uh, whatever the shear, shear score produces into an A to E or, or F in that case uh, label. Uh, the big advantage of labels is that one, you get some pressure on the producers, and two, uh, you get uh, you, you uh, facilitate uh, uh, sustainable and uh, responsible creative agencies to uh, uh, take more notice of the things that are ethically interesting. Why do we propose those two to begin with? Because those are quite measurable. Uh, and it's, in fact, uh, some, some kind of the burden of what uh, creative agencies have uh, is, is lightened with uh, that kind of tool. Yeah, okay. Um, so, of course, if labels uh, will, would have to be have to have effect. They would be. Uh, uh, it's necessary that they will be used uh, a lot and uh, even uh, should become kind of a standard. Uh, if they are just in the margin for, for example, uh, on a local level, that's not quite interesting. Yeah? It's also very um, necessary that the uh, quadruple helix, uh, as as uh, described, the academia, social organizations, government, and industry is involved in the ratification of these kind of labels. If you want to have this, uh, if you want that to work, it needs some uh, support from all levels of society. Um, the second thing uh, is the thing. Uh, I won't uh, talk much about that because I see that my time is almost up. Uh, the thing phase is, has everything to do with uh, zooming in and zooming out. Uh, um, what is zooming in? Questioning uh, specific results, interrogating concrete detailed results can happen at any time. These are the small circles. Uh, and it's AI focused. It's all about the tool itself. Um, the zooming out. Uh, is looking at the bigger picture, uh, engaging with power structures, for example, uh, looking at for systemic systemic uh, leverage. Um, uh, also, um, you don't do that that often. You do that at the big transitional moments, and it should not always only be the AI uh, aspect that is being used there. Uh, so, um, what is good for us? That is the big question here, uh, um, and. We have proposed uh, six possible lenses. One stop with them. It's just examples of what kind of lenses you could use. For example, one of these lenses is virtue ethics. A second one is deontological ethics. Uh, you have consequential ethics, contract ethics, care ethics, existential ethics. So six brands, in fact, of ethics, you could say. Uh, but this is not a checklist, uh, it's, uh, uh, and it's certainly not unchangeable, exhaustive, all or nothing, uh, fixed. You don't have to fill in the whole table all the time. Uh, but you, what the, these questions are intended to uh, uh, put yourself uh, in the shoes of someone that is asking whether it is good for us. <laughs> That's, in, in fact, the intention. Um, then the try method. Uh, well, as I said already, uh, we, we should look uh, to artificial intelligence tool in a playful way. There are defects in it, there are biases in there. There is uh, all kinds of non not so uh, sustainable stuff in there. Uh, but you should know that. Uh, that. That's the most important thing. And should also know that is, that is not something that is alien. It's uh, an aspect of humanity. And if you 
go uh, around, uh, go try to use that in in a playful way, you can learn a lot about humanity itself uh, and use it in your creative processes. So, bon. Um, so, conclusion. Um, Ethics should not be an afterthought. It's already been said uh, just in the previous uh, lecture. Um, thus, if we want it to be uh, an integral part of the creative process, if we want the AI to be used uh, in an ethical way within the creative process, we need to make it part of their tool set. Uh, and what we are developing, the framework we are developing, developing and the ethical uh, uh, aspects therein uh, is, is just trying to do that, integrate the uh, ethics in the creative process. So in the coming year we will be developing uh, uh, these useful labels, look what kind of uh, uh, indexes there are to link to the labels. Uh, we will do several uh, diverse, uh, diversified experiments um, and, uh, of course, testing the ethical compass enabled with, uh, within that AA creativity framework. Um, once the first phase is over, we would like to connect internationally to have a broader support to uh, the framework and, of course, the labeling also. So there's a bibliography here. If you want to read about it, I think the slides are available to everyone. Uh, you can have a look at it uh, later on. I don't know whether there's still time for questions, but I think there's uh, it's just just uh, 35. Um, if you have questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, I don't know, maybe I can have one or two questions. Uh, but anyhow, uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>